Thank you, Lord. I want you, will, in your Bible, turn to the book of Joshua, chapter 2. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. Thank you, Lord. Joshua, chapter 2. When you find your place there, that's going to be our main text, but mark that, hold it for just a few moments, and then turn to Matthew 1, and we're going to come right back to Joshua. These two will flow together in a few moments. Thank you, Lord. This is the season. Amen. Amen. I love Christmas time. I like it all year long. Thank you, Lord. Somebody shout, Jesus is the reason. Jesus is the reason. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Matthew 1. Would you place there in Joshua 2? Matthew chapter 1. When you find it, shall uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> the rest of you. We're going to give an altar call if you find Matthew. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Everybody got it? Say amen. amen. Matthew chapter 1. I want you to look with me. It's speaking of the genealogy of Jesus and the birth of Jesus. We're ministering a series on grace and what Jesus came to do. Grace is the favor of God that he has bestowed on us. It is unearned, unmerited. You can't do anything to get it. You can't be good enough to get it. And you can't be bad enough to stop it. It's God's goodness. Say amen yeah. to that. Amen. And it is all his benefits, all his blessings that he has given to us. The Bible says that he has said yes to all the promises of God. And the amen, the agreement, is spoken by us. Amen This simply means so be it, or I agree with you. The Phillips translation says Jesus is God's yes to all the promises. Amen. Healing, miracles, breakthrough, blessing, he's already said yes to it. You don't have to ask God if it's his will when you've got a copy of the right. will. Right, yes. Here's the will right here. Uh -huh. I know what God yes. will do. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. I didn't say I know how he'll do it. I don't care how he does it. Uh -huh. If I need a thousand dollars, I don't really care if I'm riding over the Mississippi River Bridge with my window down and a duck flies in with a envelope with a thousand, even if the duck's ugly. Uh -huh. I just want the thousand dollars. He'll do it however he wants oh, to. Say amen to that. Amen. But I know he will do yeah. it. Because yeah. I got a copy of the will. Amen. You don't have to talk God into it. It was his idea. Right. You don't have to twist his arm behind his back. Amen. He thought it up. Right. It belongs to you. Right. Yeah. In fact, really, these aren't promises that he's going to do something. He's already accomplished it in Christ. Right. Ephesians 1 3 said, Blessed be the Lord God of our fathers, Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Yeah. He has blessed yes. us. Amen. He has. With all spiritual yes, blessings yes, in heavenly yes, places. Yes. And Colossians says, He has delivered us Come on, yes. from the power of darkness and yes. has translated right, us right, right, into yes. the kingdom of His dear Son. We are the delivered. Right. Yes. He said, My stripes, we were healed. We are the healed. Yes. We are not the sick. Yes. Say amen to that. Amen. Amen. So we're looking here at the birth of Jesus. And as wonderful as it is that He came as a baby, He had to be born. And there's a reason uh, for all of this, and he came from a virgin. But how are you glad, if you don't watch it, that we just, you know, you can get religious and say, cute little baby, but he is not a baby today. No, no, no. He is raised from the no, dead. No, he has the keys of death, yes. heaven, and grave. Yes. He has been raised and seated together Thank and brought know. us up there with him at his right hand to rule and reign out of the throne yeah. in this life. And as he is, so are we in this world. Yeah. He came to destroy all the works of the devil, yeah. and he did a good job. Yeah. And now that authority, that mastery, that victory belongs to us. Amen. Give God some glory. Thank you, Lord. But he did have to come and enter the earth. So let's look here at some things, and we're going to get to the word just a few moments and put this all together. But let me read this first in Matthew 1, verse 5. And Solomon begat Boaz of Rahab. 
and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. Now look with me over in verse, um, let's look at verse 16 through 18. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. Everybody shout 14 generations. 14 generations. A generation is 40 years. And from David until the carrying away of Babylon, another 14 generations. Everybody say 14 generations. 14 generations. And from the carrying away of Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. Everybody say 14 generations. 14 generations. 14 generations, 14 generations, another 14 generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Now turn with me to the book of Joshua chapter 2 where you're holding your hands, holding your marker. You are glad you came tonight, huh? Yes, sir. It's going to be good. Yes, amen. Man, it's already good up there. Yes. Joshua chapter 2. You got it? Amen. And verse 1. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Chittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into the harlot's house named Rahab, and they lodged there. Now, let me say just for the uh, sake of time here, instead of reading this whole chapter, they're getting ready to go possess Jericho. Jericho is the biggest city in all of Canaan land that they're getting ready to go into. It's the most fortified. they got the biggest army. The walls were so thick, and people literally lived in the walls, but they were so thick that six to eight chariots could race on top of it side by side. Wow. And uh, Joshua sent two spies into the uh, Jericho to spy out the land, not to see if they could take it, but on how to take it, right. that they are going to take it, glory to God. Right. And they went to the house of Rahab, the Bible calls her here Rahab the harlot, and she hid them, and news got out, the king, uh, someone told the king, and he sent the officials and soldiers to go to her house, and her house, they had um, homes within the walls, and she hid them in the roof. And she said, yeah, they were here, but they left already. And if you hurry, you can go find them. So they left, and she saved their life. And she said, since I showed you kindness, I want to ask you to show me kindness. She said, we heard of your God, and we've heard of all the great things he's done to the other kings in the other countries. And our hearts melted within us, and our knees smote one another. Do you know, isn't it something that their hearts melted within them, their knees were smiting one another, and it says that they were afraid and in fear of this people and of their God, and yet God's people said the walls are too big, the giants are too big. Do you know the enemy is afraid of you, and some of you don't yes. even know it? Yes. That's right. They yes. didn't even know it, and the enemy was already afraid of yes. them yes. because they heard of your God. Yes. That devil knows your God. Amen. That devil knows yes. that you serve the Most High God yes. who yes. speaks a word, and it happens. Yes. If he says it, it will come to pass. Yes. He brings down enemies. Yes. He brings down who he wants to. And he lifts up who he wants yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. He's a good God in his yeah, mercy yeah, endures yeah, forever. Yeah. Somebody yeah. say, don't be yeah. yeah. And she said, I know what you're getting ready to do, and I know you're getting ready to take the city. Destruction is coming. It's on the way. But here's what I want you to do. I saved you. I showed you kindness. Now, I want to ask you to do one thing for me. I asked one thing, that you would save my family, wow. that all my family would be saved yes. when you come mm -hmm. into Jericho. Yes. She could have asked for anything. She could have asked for gold. Mm -hmm. Because remember, Israel has come out of Egypt, and they had gold, they had silver, they had raiment, they had money, they had riches. 
She could have asked for the properties and lands round about because they was getting ready to take dominion there in Canaan and she would have been fixed for life. She could have asked for money and houses and lands, but she asked for one thing. She says, I only want one thing. I want all my family to be saved. Yes. Now that's powerful. Yes. Yes. More than money, more than lands, more than houses, I want my family saved. Yes. Yes. She said, give me a sign that this is going to happen. And she let them down with a red cord. The Bible says a scarlet cord. A red cord. And she said, now give me a sign. They said, the same red cord you let me down with, you let us down with, bind it to your window. And when we see the red cord, put all your family, your father, your mother, your brothers, your sister, all your family, get them in the house, inside that wall. And when we come, if they're in the house where the red cord is, they all shall be saved. Get your family in that house. And he said, bind the red cord to your window. Bind the red cord. It is a symbol of the blood of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. It is a symbol of the blood we overcome the devil with. Yeah. We overcome it by the blood of the Lamb and the word yes. of our testimony. Yes. And he says, with the blood, all your house will be saved. Yes. Come on, let's claim that tonight. Yes. Somebody shall all my family shall oh, be saved. All our family yes. shall be saved. Now, I hope you understand that he's not just talking about your immediate family only. Amen. He is saying my kids, on, my man. children, yeah. my children's yeah. children, yeah. and my children's children's yeah. children. 20 years from now, yeah. 30 years yeah. from now, yeah. 20 years from now, to a thousand generations, yeah. all my children, yeah. all my family yeah. shall be saved. Yeah. Somebody give God some glory. She said, give me a sign. They said, take the cord. God has given us a picture of the blood. He said, the blood is like a rope. Yeah. It's like a red rope. He is saying, literally, you're going to tie a rope of blood around your kids and your kids' kids and your kids' kids' kids. And they're never going to be the way to get out of that. They shall be held by the red cord. They'll always be held by the blood of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. something here. And I want you to get excited over this. Because this woman is not just a prostitute. This woman is a madam. She runs a brothel. And here's the thing. You notice God didn't say, well, you got too much baggage. Uh, you're too bad of a sinner. You've done too much wrong. Come on. I came to tell you tonight, your family can be saved no matter what your background is. Because right. right. this woman was a harlot. She was morally unfit. She was socially bankrupt. And she was not running a Motel 6 or a Holiday Inn or a Sheraton or a Hilton. She was running a brothel as a, a, a madam and a prostitute. But can I tell you, there is nothing in your past so great as the blood. The blood is bigger than anything in your past. The blood of Jesus is stronger and more powerful than anything you've done wrong, anything in your past, and it cannot stop your family from being set free. Because here's what God put inside my spirit tonight, and coming at it from a slightly different angle, that the enemy, we talked about how he loves to condemn you, but here's one of the things he'll condemn you with. He'll make you feel such shame and such guilt over your past, and then tell you, when you look at your children, every time something's going wrong, that you're only reaping what you sowed. And I came to call the devil a liar. Yes. Because the blood of Jesus yes. has cleansed the yes. sleep and cleansed your past and did away with the old you. And my Bible says, he doesn't say if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. He said, be Behold, yeah. if any man be a God, behold, 
That means look. Open your eyes. Get a revelation. Behold, if any man wake up to this. Look at somebody say, wake up, baby. Wake up, wake up. Behold, if any man be in Christ. He is a new creation. All things are passed away. All things have become new. I said all things have passed away. I said all things are new. I said all And do you understand when he says a new creation, the literal Greek says a species of being that never existed before. Wow. It is what God did when he made Adam and picked up a lump of dirt and blew his breath into it and made a new creation that never existed. When you were born again, he didn't just remold you and remake you and make you a little bit better. He did away with the old you that committed that and had a past. He got rid of him, nailed him to the cross, buried him with Jesus. And when Jesus came up, a new man came up with him. Oh, somebody needs to show. Your past does not determine your future. Yes, thank you, Lord. God said, I don't care about your past. I can change your future regardless of your past. Yeah, Christ yeah. can change your future. Yes, thank you, Father. And this condemnation and this lie that the enemy uses against God's people stops them from their miracle, stops them from their breakthrough mm -hmm. because they feel shame and guilt over their past. But I came to tell you, today, you no longer have the old past. Amen. you got a new past in Christ. Because once you enter into Christ, his past has become your past. His present is your present. Amen. His future is your future. Yes. I like Romans 4 or 5. And Paul says by the Spirit of God that God justifies. That means declares righteous. The ungodly. God justifies. Declares righteous. The ungodly. Not the perfect. There are no such creatures. He doesn't justify perfect people. You wouldn't need justified. You can't be good enough. I can't be good enough. No one can ever be good enough. He takes the ungodly and makes them righteous. Righteous means you have a right to stand in God's presence. And because Jesus is your righteousness, you are as pure and because he's your righteousness, you're as worthy as he is because he is your righteousness. Yes. The Living Bible says God declares sinners good in his sight that have faith in Christ or faith in his blood. Romans 9.33 says whoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. Look at somebody say no shame, no shame. No shame. No shame. The Amplified verse says he who believes in him shall not be put to shame nor be disappointed in his expectation. I like what Isaiah says in Isaiah 60. He says, for those who have been given shame, I shall give you double for your shame. The Amplified Version says, I'm going to give you double peace, and I'm going to give you double blessing, and I'm going to give you double prosperity for the shame the enemy has brought against you. Who am I talking to now? I'm going to prophesy for somebody in the house. There is nothing stronger than the blood of Jesus. God honored her faith even with the background that she had. The devil can not reach into your past and condemn you That's right. and make you feel like your children can never be saved. Come on. That's right. But because of your husband or because of you or because of your past failures, they'll always be like your past. It'll always be like this. No. It runs in the family. No, no. Can I tell you you got a new family? Oh, yeah. Can I tell you you yeah. got a new bloodline? Yeah. Can I tell you my Bible says in Galatians in the New Testament that we are New Testament believers that we are redeemed from the curse yeah. of the law. Yeah. 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 And the blessing of Abraham, yeah. our spiritual father is yeah. on that. Yes. There is no curse in our yeah. family. Yeah. There are no generational curses that fall upon me because I got a new father. I got a new blood, the blood of Jesus, running and coursing through my veins. Uh, I've, I've heard people like, uh, you know, they come to me and say, well, you know, alcoholism runs in my family and drug addiction runs in my family and... Poverty runs in my, like I can't help it, it runs in my family, but, but can I tell you 
that in the new family that you're in, once you move into Christ, uh, victory runs into my family. Yeah, 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 yeah. And somebody needs to help me. I'm about yeah, to have one yeah, up in here. I'm about to take a ride. Yeah. Triumph runs in my family. Yeah, yeah. And anointing yeah. runs in my family yeah. that destroys yeah. every guilt and yeah. victory yeah. and mastery. Yeah. Yeah. Rolling and reigning yeah. in authority. Yeah. It, it runs in my family. I can't help but be victorious. It just runs in my family. I can't help to always triumph. Because it's God's testimony to what he did for his people because of our failures. And he wanted to meet with his people. It's known as a place of dwelling. And in that tabernacle, in the Holy of Holies, there was the Ark of the Covenant. In the Ark of the Covenant, there were three items. The pot of manna. Number two, there was Aaron's rod, a stick that God made bud supernaturally. And number three, there was the two tables of stone containing the law or the Ten Commandments. And God instructed Moses and the priest to put that inside the ark and cover it with a lid that he called the mercy seat. And then he had the priest take the blood of the lamb, a sacrifice, and sprinkle it seven times a day. Seven is the number of perfection or completeness. He was saying, in the blood, I have made my mercy complete. In the blood, I have made you complete. In the blood, I have made you perfect. And God covers these three things. Why? Because all these things were rooted in the worst failures of Israel. It's when Israel was murmuring and complaining. It's when Israel was in rebellion. It was when Israel failed. And the law, the Ten Commandments, is holy and righteous. And it demands judgment because of your sin and because of your failure. It demands judgment and it demands death. So God takes the three worst failures and covers it with mercy and covers it with blood. Because he is a good God. Yes, thank you, Lord. And he said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Yeah. And the death angel cannot touch you. Yeah. The death angel cannot enter. The book of Leviticus says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And when God looks down, instead of seeing the law that demands judgment, on top of that, covering that, he sees blood and he sees life. And he sees protection. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, in 1 Samuel 6, 19, we have a story in that chapter about the Philistines, God's people's enemies. And the Philistines, the enemy, kidnapped the Ark of the Covenant. They took the Ark. And the Bible says they uncovered the Ark. They took off the mercy seat. They got rid of the mercy. They took off the blood. And it says they reached down into it and started to pulling out the past failures of Israel. Started uncovering the failures of Israel as they dug around and pulled it out. And the Bible says that God's anger was kindled and 50,000 of them was immediately slain because they was fooling around with your past failures. God has given us a picture here that says when I put something under the blood and when I put your failures and your pains under my mercy, don't you ever let any enemy dig out what I've already covered in my blood and in my mercy. Who am I talking to now? right to your life and to your children and to your future because he's covered it with the blood and his mercy. Can you give God a praise? Let's just have a little praise for it. Come on up in here. All my children and all your children are under the blood and under the mercy of God. You overcome it by the blood of the Lamb. 
in the word of your testimony. Yes. Yes. And the great thing about this is that really, Paul said those things in the Old Testament was an example for us, a model. But the blood of Jesus does not atone or cover. The word atone means covered. Right. And just like you see this purple blanket here, you, 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 you see it's covering this chair. But you can still see the outline of the chair because the chair is still there. It's just covering it. So when I look down, instead of seeing the chair, even though the chair is there, I see the blanket. And in the Old Testament, the blood of bulls and goats and the blood of lambs, it covered, it atoned for the sins of the people, although their failures were still there. But the blood of Jesus does not cover our sins. The blood of Jesus, the Bible says, remits our sins. Glory. It means yeah. does away Glory. with it like yeah. it never Hallelujah. existed. Hallelujah. And it not only does away with our sin, he did away with the old house and made a new us. And there's no record in heaven that you ever did sin. Right. There's no record in heaven of any sin you've ever committed. There's no record in heaven that you was ever a sinner once you're in Christ. Somebody needs to say, help me yeah. right about now. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody yeah. just got to pray. Anybody glad that your pets cannot curse your children? Yes, hallelujah. Maybe your father was an alcoholic, but I came to prophesy your children's not going to be. Amen. Maybe you were addicted to drugs and pornography and had psychological problems and sickness and disease ran rampant in your family and the curse of poverty was in your family's background. But today, the blood of Jesus reaches past your background and sets you free for whom the Son sets free. covenant on top where they put the mercy seat and they covered it with blood on each end on the top of the mercy seat there was two cherubims he said make them out of gold which is divinity and he said their wings were spread to cover and their face looked down toward the blood in the mercy seat the first time you see the cherubims or hear about cherubims is in the book of Genesis after Adam and Eve have sinned, they have sinned, and the Bible says God drove them out of the garden, and to protect the tree of life, he put cherubims around the tree of life with flaming swords to protect it, and to keep them out of the garden, and to keep them away from the tree of life. Now, if you think about it, those swords were a type of judgment, but it was also a type of God's protection. Because Adam and Eve was actually born again in reverse. You know, in John 8, Jesus said to the religious leaders, the preachers of his day, you're of your father, the devil. In the works of your father, you'll do. You do understand this because you're a preacher, don't make you say. Or just because you're a preacher's kid. Huh? Or because you're saved, your children aren't automatically saved. God doesn't have any grandchildren. He's only got children. Right. Say amen to that. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. So, he says to these preachers, you're of your father, the devil. When we're born today, darkness is inside our spirit. That's why you must be born again. When we're born again, we are born from darkness into life. Right. We change fathers. Yeah. We change yeah. the devil as a father. Yes. Into God as our spiritual father. Right. Right. Yes. That's why you want to watch who you marry. Because if you marry someone who's lost, guess who your father-in-law is going to be? Yes. <laughs> so, Adam, though, when he was born and came into creation, God was his father. And he was born in life. And once they sinned, he went from light to darkness. Today, when we're born again, we go from darkness to light. But when he sinned and committed spiritual high treason, he was born again in reverse and already had the light. He lost the light and went into darkness. Yeah. Yeah. You follow me? Yeah. 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 So when you see 
God. People say, well, why did God drive them out of the garden? And why did God put cherubim with flaming swords around the tree of life? Because if they would have eaten out of the tree of life, they would have stayed in that state forever. Right. Two things, they would have lived a long life, and God's life would have entered them, and they would have been a half devil, half God, like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Mm -hmm. Wow. So God, in order to protect them, drove them out. But now, God gives us a different picture of the cherubims, and notice, now they have no swords. They're on the mercy seat. Yes. And now they're not pushing you away from life. Come on. They're looking at life. Yeah. They're looking at the mercy. And instead of pushing you away, they are welcoming you in. And the Bible says sometimes God in the Old Testament dwells in between the cherubims. And then he says in Deuteronomy and in Numbers, he tells Moses, he says, Moses, above the mercy seat between the two cherubims, where the blood is, where the mercy is, I will meet you there. I will meet you there. Where is God's meeting place with his people? It's not in judgment. It's not in destruction. It's not. It's not in failure. I'll will meet you yes. in blood. Yes. I will meet oh, you glory. in mercy. Glory. Glory. And he says, and I will commune with you there. Yes. Yes. I will commune with you there. Yes. You want to find a place where God talks to you? Where God reveals his secrets to you? Where God will give you illumination and revelational knowledge of God? Golden keys that are unlike the things you're dealing with today in your life, in your family, with your children, with your money, with your finances, with your destiny. Where is that place? It's in mercy. Yes. Yes. It's not coming and telling God how bad you are and telling God about all your failures. He says, I can't even remember your sins and iniquities anymore. I delight to meet in mercy. I rejoice in mercy. In Zephaniah, he says, I rejoice and I will dance yeah. over you with yeah. joy and thanksgiving, yeah. says the Lord. Yeah. Oh, come on up in here, somebody. Yeah. Uh, Lord, Lord. Uh, so, the next thing that I saw in this is these men prophesied to Rahab and said, take the red cord, take the blood. It's a blood like a rope. They said, here's your sign you want to sign? And they said, bind it to the window. Bind it to the window. He didn't say, get the priest to do it. He didn't say, get your pastor to do it. He didn't say, get the youth pastor to do it for your kids. He said, Mama, Daddy, you take the blood like a cord and bind it to the window. And your family, all of them, ALL, will be saved. The word saved means delivered to prosper. To be healed, yeah. to be blessed. Yeah. You take the blood. Name your children and take the yeah. blood over them. Blood on their mind. Blood on their hands. Blood on their feet. Blood in their comings. Blood in their going. Clean the blood. When you take the blood, it's like a rope. You are tying your children up and binding them with the blood in the corn holes. They can't get loose. your faith. Yes, Lord. See, Jesus did the dying. We must do the applying. Yes. Right. Yes. Can I say that one more time? Jesus yes. did the dying. Amen. But we yes. must do the applying. But we must do the applying. Yes. The title of tonight's message is the mystery and the power Glory. of the scarlet cord. Glory. Glory. The mystery and the power yes. 
of the scarlet cord. We overcome by the blood. No matter what's going on out there, we have the victory in here because of the blood. Because if you don't watch it, and I believe we need to vote for the right people. And I believe we need to have somebody in office in the White House and the Governor's House and the Mayor's House and our U.S. Senate and the Congress that lines up with the things of God are in favor with the Word of God and that doesn't hate America and doesn't hate the Lord and they're not anti-Christ. But can I tell you, nothing in Washington can affect what's in my house. Right. Nothing in the governor's house right. can affect what's in my house. Right. Nothing in the mayor's house can affect in my house. He said, Rahab, you can affect it. You can stop it. You can tie your children up in the blood. He said, give me a sign. He said, all your family shall be saved. He said, bind the red cord. Bind the blood. Bind the scarlet cord around them. Because all of our children are going to grow up and they're going to leave. But I came to tell you, no atheistic or agnostic right. college right. professor right. can talk your kids That's out right. of the word of God. That's no right. girlfriend, no boyfriend, yeah. no beer party at yeah. the university yeah. can remove yeah. the bloody cord yeah. and call them. If it holds, yes. Yes, it does. they can't get free from it. They'll try. My children's tried. Your children's tried. And it'll look like they'll do their best to get away from it. But you got the blood. Blood on my baby. Blood on John. The blood on Susan. And they're out trying to get a get away, but oh, you got the blood and you pull them back. Because he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Oh, I hear the words of the prophet out of Acts 16. He says, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your household shall be saved. You and your household shall be protected. You and your household shall be delivered. He's like a sparrow you shoot and fly after me. One of the old time preachers years ago, I read one of his sermons. He was a well-known sermon from the early 1900s called The Hound of Heaven. That Jesus is always there with you. He's always following you. He's always with you. And he's never going to let you go. And you got a covenant not with just about your life, but about your children. He said, Rahab. Rahab. Notice God never condemns her. Notice God never even talks about her sin. Notice God never mentions her mistakes. Notice God never talks about her past. Notice God doesn't say it's too bad, it's too big. The curse is on you. The curse is on your kids. There's nothing I can do. They're cursed all the days of his life. My blood ain't Rahab. My blood is stronger. It's like a cord. You can wrap them. You can wrap them. Like a cord, like a rope with my blood. I don't know about you. I've tried to get away a few times myself. You ever had people talk about you? You ever had people say things about you? And people say things about you that wasn't true? 
What's worse when they say it and it is true? <laughs> so I've had it, I'm leaving. I don't need this. I can do better somewhere else. You pack your suitcase. But there's something that keeps pulling you back. There's something about this hound of heaven, this Jesus, this Christ who gave himself and his blood pulls you back. You try to go to the left and it pulls you back. You try to go to the right and it pulls you back. You try to run away, but he pulls you back into the kingdom. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I've seen all of our children try. Oh, yeah. But we put the blood on them. Yes, From the time they were a baby, yes. we wrapped a cord of blood around them. Amen. That precious blood. Yes. It's not the blood of an animal. It's not the blood of a man. It's the blood of Almighty God. Yes. Amen. The conquers hell. Uh -huh. Look at somebody say, you got to rebuke that devil. Look at somebody say, you got to rebuke that devil. Uh, I noticed the third thing, and I'm about ready to close. Are you glad you came tonight? Oh, yes. 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 Wow. He said, by the way, did you notice? Did you notice? Here it is. He said, Rahab, bind the cord to the window, the entrance to the house, the window that opens and shuts. Put the blood on the entrance mm -hmm. good. to your home That's good. for protection. Yeah. In other words, the scarlet cord dictates what has access into your window, mm -hmm. into your house. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that sound like what he told Moses oh. and Joshua? He said, take a hyssop and take the sacrifice of the blood of the lamb and dip the hyssop. The hyssop was just a little bush. And they would dip it in the blood. And he said, now sprinkle it on the doorpost of the house, the entrance. And he says, when the death angel comes, he cannot enter the destroyer. He shall not enter. And actually, we read that, but if you ever read the book of Exodus in chapter 11 and 12 and 13, during this time, and he's telling them to apply the blood. Say this way, Jesus did the dying. Jesus did the dying. We do the applying. We do, we do the, the applying. applying. When Joshua and had the fathers take the hyssop as a type of our faith, with our faith, we sprinkled the blood. Yes. We have faith in the blood yes. for protection. Yes. But he talks about two entities, two individuals there. God's talking about himself, and he's talking about the destroyer. He said, when you put the blood over your house, the destroyer cannot enter. Wow. But when I see the blood, I'll pass over. Now, come on, we're Louisiana folk. We talk like Cajuns, mm -hmm. and I'm Bernard Louisiana, rednecks. <laughs> Passover means he's done, passed over. Passed himself a good time. He's passed over. He's passed by. That's how we read it. But he didn't say I'm going to pass by. He said I'm going to pass over. The Hebrew phrase there means to surround in order to protect. He says the destroyer will go on by and not enter. But he says, when I see the blood, I'll pass myself over. I'll hover over you. It literally means in the one translation, it says, I'll hover over you like a mother bird over her oh, nest. Glory, glory. I'll surround you. I'll pass over you. I'll cover you and protect you with myself when I see the blood. Oh, somebody needs to praise the Lord a little bit. What are you talking about? will not touch one person in that house. Amen. Destruction was coming to Jericho. There is destruction out there. There is a destroyer called the devil, but thank God he's defeated. Yes. Amen. 
and you have victory over him. Yes. Amen. We don't fight the devil, we fight the fight of faith because he's already yes. defeated. Yes. Literally, in the book of Ephesians, it yes. says, when you've done all this, stand, stand there yes. for him. And some of us kind of think like we're like Papa. The devil's beating the daylights out of us, and I got my shield of paint, and it's got darts in it. And I've taken all I can stands, and I can't stands no more. One more dart, and I'm going out. But that's not what he says. The literal Greek says, he says, when you've done all this stand, stand, the literal Greek says, having conquered all, stand. Yes. Yes. Having conquered all. During Christ, Come on. the devil's defeated. Jesus took the keys of death, hell, and the grave away from him, took his heel, and threw the head of Satan. Went down through the corners of hell and said, Give them to me. Give me the keys of hell. Give me the keys of the grave. Give me the keys of death. And he arose victorious and told the church, Because I live, you shall live. My own Phoenician woman. Don't even give her name. But when they name you and give your father's name, that's your pedigree, that's your lineage. Because it means, hey, Bodemus might be blind, but he ain't nobody. His daddy is a man of substance. His daddy, when he mentions your father, it means he's known in the community. He's a man of wealth and property and of high esteem. He's the son of Tanias. He may be blind, but his daddy's Tanias. Names in your background means everything. Mm -hmm. But God, you ain't gonna put him in a box. Come on. I was uh, noticing some scholars and big boys pontificating about who's gonna be the next Billy Graham. He's going to be gone soon and a great man of God. And so they start naming this one and that one and this one who could take his place and who got in my pit. And here's what I want to ask you. They didn't pick the first one. Who do they think they are going to pick the second one? Because they didn't pick him because he was a somebody. Nobody even knew who he was. God will take an old boy out of the hills with three teeth and make you shake the world and raise the dead and bring millions of people. God will take a woman who sleeps with five men and none of them are a husband and get touched by Jesus and rush back into her town and tell everybody, look what this man did for me. He'll take a little boy that don't have nothing but five loaves and two breads and feed 20,000 people. He's got all by himself and he don't need no help. Uh, so he takes five women. And here's Jesus' pedigree. Hmm. That was about Sarah. That 
enough about Sarah. No, 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 no. Bathsheba! Bathsheba. King David's little problem. He's my favorite. Please don't talk about I know he was a peep of time. He had that little problem. He stayed home. He should have been war. But you know, even you know how men are. And it's in their genes. And he should have been peeping. But he's a peeper. He's a turd. But she out. <laughs> Put your right in there. Tamar. Mm -hmm. Oh, Tamar. She covers her face and puts on a black dress with a slit and it stands on a corner and acts like a prostitute and has sex with her own father-in-law who doesn't even know who she is and God puts her name right in the midst of Jesus genealogy. Mm -hmm. Ruth! Mm -hmm. yeah. A Moabitess, an idolater, mm -hmm. a moon worshiper, a sun worshiper. Put your name right in there. And to add insult to injury, Rahab. Not just an everyday prostitute. Come on. Not just a hoe. <laughs> she is a madam. She runs a brothel and puts her name in there. When she gets married, her and her husband gives birth to old dad. And old dad gives birth to Jesse. And Jesse gives birth to David. And Rahab, a harlot, becomes the great, 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 great grandmother of Jesus. Here are the Jews waiting for the Messiah. Waiting for the Redeemer. Waiting for the Savior. And look at his background. Look who God uses. A prostitute. A man of. God says, I'll use who I want to use. I'll touch who I want to touch. I'll cleanse who I want to cleanse. Because there's no sin. There's no failure. There's no mistake you can ever make that's more powerful than my blood. Yes, Lord. Lord, Lord. And he takes this woman and it says 14 generations and another 14 generations and another 14 generations. This woman took the bloody cord wrapped her whole family, her children, her children's children, her children's children, children, 14 generations, another 14 generations, another 14 generations, and the blood kept them to Jesus was yes. born. Yes. 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 Oh, you can clap better than that. The cord holds. They might try to get away, but they ain't getting away. Come on, amen. Come on. You try to get away, but you couldn't. Mm -hmm. He says, I'll keep you by my power yes. in Peter. Mm -hmm. We're not kept by our goodness and our good will and our strong will. Notice. He says, Mom's dad, put the blood on your children, over their minds. Okay. Because all the stuff that's out there today. The windows of their eyes and their ears and the gates of their heart. Because of the filth and the sinfulness and the wickedness that's out there. But it don't matter what's out there. You can't get in here. Come on, come on. That's right. That's right. When you got the blood on your windows. Put the blood on their computers, yes. Yes. on their telephone, yes. Yes. on the television. Yes. A pastor, pastor, when you walk, tell them the word. At night when they lay down, tell them the word. And you shall have days as heaven on the earth. The red cord. So 
Somebody shout the red cord. The red cord. He said, this is your sign. Rahab, it's your faith. It's not how good or how bad you was. It's your faith. Because quite frankly, none of us has been good enough. Come on, that's, right. that's why we need Jesus. We all need Jesus. I need him every day. He said, here's the sign. You bind it. Wrap the blood around them. And when you wrap the blood around them, I wrap myself around them. And when you wrap the blood around them, it's like a rope that they can't get out of. And it holds. They can't break the hold of it. Thank you, Lord. I said they cannot break the hold of it. They can't cut it. Can't snap it. They can't stop it. It's a blood of love. It's a blood of mercy. Do you know in 2 Chronicles, when they're facing the enemy, and they're outnumbered with great kings and great armies. And the prophet said, the Lord says, thus saith the Lord, go out tomorrow, for the battle is not yours, it's mine. And when you go out, cry this. The Lord is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Amen. We know that part, but you know what's right before that? You know what the whole thing is? Because most of us remember that part, but we don't remember the whole thing. He says, you're to go forth showing the beauty of his holiness. That the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Most of us have been so frightened and made afraid of God that he's holy and he is holy. He's Christ holy. Three times more holy than we can ever think. And the power of God, when you come in his presence, you'll probably fall down. But it's not because he's scary. And it's not because he's mean. God is love. In his throne, he said, come boldly to the throne of grace. But we've been taught that he's holy. And by that, we think it's something frightening. And that we can't look upon him. And that we'll die. And that we're no good. And isn't it something that he says, here's what the beauty of holiness is. He is good and his mercy endures forever. His goodness and his mercy beautifies his holiness. He's not just holy, he's good and he's merciful. And he said, that's where I'll meet you. I'll meet you in the blood. That's what I delight in, mercy and in grace. That's where I'll commune with you. That's where I'll deal with your children and you. Always in mercy. Always with goodness. Always with loving kindness. Always with tender mercies. And in Isaiah 54, after Jesus is raised from the dead, Isaiah looking for thousands of years, saying, Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer, I'll never, ever be angry. With you again, saith the Lord. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue risen against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. And the next part of that we leave off. God starts talking again. And it's like he gets an attitude, he gets in the face of the devil. For their righteousness is of me. In other words, if you don't like it, take it up with me. You don't like Rahab? You don't like who I choose? You don't like the people I pick? Their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. And I picked you, and I elected you, and I chose you. And I deal with you in blood, and I deal with your children in blood. And the devil is a liar. I came to encourage you tonight that you and your whole household shall be saved. And don't you ever let the devil tell you anymore what you reap, what you sow you reap because of your past. Because the blood has taken care of that. Come on, come on, come on. And all that's done away with. And you're a new creation. And you're a new person. And your past is over. And the blood has cleaned you. The blood has cleaned your life and your history. 
So raise your hand tonight. I came to speak life to you tonight. Not a cursing, but a blessing. I came to speak life to your blessings and your finances. And I came to speak life to your marriage. And I came tonight to see some things turned around in your life. I came to pronounce prosperity on you and goodness and mercy. I came to tell you, God's not mad at you, but he loves you. And he wants to turn some things around for you and your family. I came to speak good over you and not evil. And I came to tell you today, God's favor is upon you and that you're highly favored of the Lord. I came to break the curse of poverty. I came to break every curse of your past. And I came to release your inheritance. And I came to pass along your spiritual blessing and a blessing to your family. Come on and give God glory. Your past does not determine your future. Come on and shout and thank God for the blood. Thank you.